Hi guys, this video was actually recorded a couple of years ago. It just never made it to the light of day. It hadn't been edited. Um, this is actually a key part to understand in heating. You should definitely follow these rules uh, change the numbers in the things that you learn, learn the different outcomes of the different equations and try and internalize it. Because we'll be using this repeatedly throughout this series to teach different sort of theories in heating. I really can't stress enough how fundamental this is to heating design. It's important for cylinder sizing, cylinder reloading times, um, pipework sizing, plate heat ex uh, exchanger sizing. Uh, it's just so key. So you should really take this on board uh, follow the equation, change the numbers and see what the different results are once you've changed the numbers. Uh, and once you get this, your whole understanding of heating will completely change. Hi guys, very quick video on mass flow rate here. So what is mass flow rate? Mass flow rate is the relationship between the energy in, generally in kilowatts, the capacity for the medium to carry heat, which is called specific heat capacity, and the flow rate. And what you get from those relationships is a delta T. Delta T um, is Latin, basically meaning temperature difference, differential temperature um, between your flow and your return. So the calculation in its simplest form is kilowatts divided by specific heat capacity times delta T. So as I say, these three are generally fixed. This one can be variable. That can also be variable. You can turn this lots of ways around, which we'll go into. So specific heat capacity. This is the capacity your medium has, be it water or glycol or a mixture of the two, to carry heat. And what the number represents is the amount of joules, which is energy, required to heat one kilogram of water by one degree Celsius. The amount of energy required to do that is 4,180 odd joules. It depends on the temperature and other varying factors. Or to make the number more simple, 4.1, generally everyone rounds up to 4.2 kilojoules, which is what we use for simplicity. So that's 4.2 kilojoules per kilogram of water per one degree raised. DT, as we said, is temperature difference. Generally across a boiler or radiators, we want a delta T of 20. So that's 20. Kilowatts is how much energy we think is going to be needed in that room or that house. So let's do a whole house for this example. And again, we'll use 28 kilowatts. So what's going to be left if we use all of those factors is our flow rate. And in this form, we're going to end up with the flow rate in liters per second. So specific heat capacity times delta T. So delta T 20 times 4.2 is 84. This number if you just remember this number, you're gonna make your whole life so much easier. You can be on site or anywhere, just know that number and you can have an answer like that and you'll come across a genius. So 84 kilowatts is 28. So 28 divided by 84, 28 divided by 84 equals 0 0.33 reoccurring. Generally, that's a difficult number to sort of comprehend. So I normally do times 60, which will put it into liters per minute, which equals 19.99999, or we'll just do 20 liters a minute. So you know that you're gonna have to find a pump that will provide 20 liters a minute against whatever system resistance you have. And again, this works for radiators as well. So for each radiator, you can work out the flow rate through each one. Just to show you how the relationship works, if we do 14 kilowatts, which is half the amount of kilowatts, divided by 84, you can probably guess what the answer is. If you've got half the amount of kilowatts and you want to maintain delta T20, the answer is 10 liters a minute. Um, if we want to have underfloor heating, and it's 14 kilowatts of underfloor heating, and we're going to run the underfloor heating at a delta T of 10, which is a little bit wide, if anything. But this is for illustration. We would do 
4.2 times 10 equals 42, or you just half that, obviously. And then we get an answer of 20 liters a minute. Because although we've kept our load the same, the delta T across the flow and return is halved. And for it to lose less heat, you have to run the pump twice as fast. So you're getting twice the amount of flow, double the flow, you half the delta T. It's worth doing this sum a few different ways around to just internalize it. Now an engineer called Morris Mudd pointed out because of the way this sum works, it fits in what's known as a magic triangle. I'm grateful to him for that because it makes all of this much easier. So the magic triangle looks like this. Kilowatts at the top of a triangle. And you might recognize this triangle from Ohm's law. Kilowatts over, doesn't matter which way around you do this bit, um, delta T times specific heat capacity, uh, which is nearly always 84, remember that. The other one to remember is 29, or 29.5 if you want to be precise. I just remember 29 to be honest because that is T7 for underfloor. So radiators, underfloor. What we're we missing here, we're missing liters per second. So uses for this. Um, we can, for example, work out the amount of kilowatts required for a combination boiler. So let's say you needed 12 liters a minute um, hot water production. We do 12 liters a minute. We'd have to put that into liters per second so times six, uh, no, sorry, divided by 60. 12 divided by 60 equals 0.2. So we've got 0.2 liters per second. Your delta T would be your incoming flow temperature. So let's say we're gonna work off um, 10 degrees and you want your flow temperature to be 50 degrees. That's a delta T of 30. So 30 times Specific heat capacity is 4.2. 30 times 4.2. One, two, six. So what you do is, whatever you're trying to find out, you'd cover up on this triangle. We're trying to find out the kilowatts in. So we're left with 0.2 liters per second we need of hot water at a 30 degree rise times specific heat capacity. So we do, ah, uh, this, just to make this clear, that should be sort of a time symbol in there. And above and below that line is obviously a divide. So if we do 0.2 times 126 equals 25.2, we would need the output to be 25.2 kilowatts in order to achieve 0.2 liters per second at a 30 degree rise. Let's clear this off and do another one. Let's say um, you had a boiler that was overheating or something like that. I mean, generally with boilers, if they're overheating, you can feel the flow pipes really hot and the return's really cold. Obviously, if you're feeling it coming down the return, you know it's not circulating at all. But generally, if you've got a hot flow and a hot return, you know you've got a wide delta T. But just for illustrative purposes, let's say we had a delta T of uh, 40, um, if you measure delta T 40 and go through this, you'll see that you're not getting very many liters per second. So it's kind of obvious anyway, if you've got a wide delta T that you haven't got enough flow, but you could work out exactly how much flow you've got. And other reasons to use this would be to size pumps, size pipe work, but also as I go through this video series, you'll see that I'll use it in loads of other areas where you wouldn't think it would be used. And once you understand this, you really understand theoretically how heating works. So that's it for this video, just a quick one. We could take this and apply it to lots of different situations, which we're not going to. Um, definitely want to keep this one if you want to start learning how to size pipe work, low loss headers, distribution headers, boiler pumps, underfloor heating, plate heat exchangers, and a ton of other stuff. So write it down, keep it in your repertoire, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.
Hi guys, as always, we wanna hear from you. So if there's anything you guys really wanna learn or want to explain further, please let us know and we'll either find it for you and show you what we've already created for it or create a video specifically for that topic. So please either get in touch via our email address or on heekgeek.com or mention down in the comments and we'll do our best to help you out. And um, more importantly, we're gonna be going into much more detail about this in an online training course over on heatgeek.com. If you're interested in learning or deepening your knowledge, go to heatgeek.com, sign up to the newsletter, and we'll let you know when this is available for you.